In confusion and uncertainty, there emerges a guiding light, a beacon that cuts through the darkness. Welcome to Beacon of Truth with your host, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. Well, happy fifth week of Lent. Yeah, we're uh, almost at the end here, getting ready for Holy Week next week, starting with Palm Sunday. Uh, always an, an amazing time of year. Um, you know, I always feel more drawn in to the life of the church during during this time of year. We kind of laser focus on the, um, on the uh, in a sense, the high point, the pinnacle of Christ's ministry, um, in which he, uh, this week, will reflect on instituting the Eucharist, um, he dying uh, and, and destroying death and rising to, to new life. And uh, just an uh, incredible time here. I have to prepare to sing the Exultet in our parish. I sing the Exultet in Latin. And uh, it's actually pretty cool, you know. So the, you know, I go and I incense the uh, Easter candle, incense the Exultet. And then I climb in there, and there's, it's cool because all the you know the people holding the candles and the lights are out in the church, and there's a spotlight that's on me while the incense is rising, and I start, you know, exalted the angelica turbace lorum, and keep going, and then and then we have uh, like a commentator kind of doing a, a a dramatic reading in English, so kind of my voice is kind of floating there in the background singing, and then. The commentators, it's actually, it's beautiful. It's actually very, very well done. And we've been doing that for years in the parish. So I always look forward to it. But I do have to practice the exalted. It's because it's pretty long. And I am doing it in Latin. It's actually easier for me to do it in Latin because um, I can follow the notations there um, and the, the, the kind of the, the old style monastic um, notes and inflections there. That's actually easier for me to read than regular music. So, uh, but I always have to practice every year. And one thing that I do that I always look forward to during Holy Week is on Good Friday, I always watch the Passion of the Christ. You know, I, I kind of have to get myself uh, ready for that movie every year. And, and uh, you know, I sit down and I, and, I, and I watch it and I really try to be drawn in and reflect on what Christ uh, did for us on that day. So this is a pretty special week uh, uh, for all of us, for all of us, and, and, and me uh, in particular, um, especially as a deacon, the way you know I get to participate in these uh, special liturgies coming up next week. And uh, we're going gonna to have some shows next week talking about Holy Week and the importance of the days and the meaning of the days. And so I'm really looking forward to that. Well, today our topic is Eucharistic adoration man one of my favorite things to talk about and i know for a fact that many of you have out there have had an experience with our lord in the blessed sacrament when you were before him in eucharistic adoration so we want to hear the truth about your experience with christ because he is present body blood soul divinity most blessed sacrament of the eucharist and we need to spend time with him imagine uh Saying I love someone, like so my wife. Oh, honey, I love you so much. You are my heart. You are the, the, you are my life. But I don't want to spend any time with you. <laughs> but, yeah, how far are you going to get with that? Right? Come on. So, but why do we do that with Jesus? Oh, Jesus, you're the most important person in my life. You're my everything. You're my soul. And da, da, da. but we don't want to spend any time with him. You know. Yeah. Now we're at mass, but then Eucharistic adoration. You know, we spend that time before him, opening our hearts, pouring out our lives before him. That's really what it's all about. We'll get more into that uh, as we progress on the show here. But the number for you to call to participate is 833-288-3986. Once again, we're talking about Eucharistic adoration. And the phone number to join us is 833-288-3986. Eight, six, uh, to, to be part of Beacon of Truth on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Or you can email beacon at EWTN.com. And uh, uh, so where in the world am I? <laughs> so, you know, for the past few days, I was in Holotus, Texas, uh, doing a parish mission. The last night of the mission was last night. Um, and I think it, uh, I, I talked about the armor of God, Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, I didn't go through every piece of armor, but but because it's Lent and, uh, you know, I always leave room for the Holy Spirit. 
to work during my talks. There were four pieces of the armor that I focused on specifically, and um, and I think it went uh, I think it went very well. And now I am in very beautiful um, Charleston, South Carolina. It is like 75 degrees and sunny outside. It's absolutely beautiful day here in Charleston. And I am here to speak to the members of Legatus. So uh, because this meeting is not open, it's not open to the public. Um, so after the show, I will be uh, go, just walking right next door to the cathedral. I'm at, I'm at the uh, diocese and offices uh, at the Diocese of Charleston. And a huge, huge shout out. Um, to Stephanie, you know, uh, when I called the hotel last night, they said, oh, yeah, we have Ethernet. I said, no, not Internet. You, listen to what I'm saying, Ethernet, hardware. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So I get here, and they don't have it. <laughs> so, so I called my event coordinator, and, and uh, she made some calls and, and uh, got in contact with Stephanie here at the diocesan, the chancery offices, diocesan office in Charleston. And, and Stephanie's been amazing. I got here. Everything was all set up and I just had to just plug things in and and off and off we go. So she is great. Thank you Stephanie so much. And then uh I'm only here for one night just for tonight then I'm off again tomorrow. But the good part is uh after I'm done speaking on Saturday, uh I will go home. Yay. <laughs> I'll be home for for Holy Week uh, which I'm very much looking forward to. Uh so that's awesome. But th- again, this this uh, show is brought to you by some amazing people working behind the scenes that you always don't get to meet, like Charles Berry doing social media and Matt Kabinsky screening calls and the one and only Ace McKay producing the show today. How you doing, Ace? I'm good, man. I love that we're focusing on this topic today because it's distracting me from the desire to want to keep up with my brackets for uh, March Madness. So... <laughs> I don't have to worry about being depressed because I'm thinking about Jesus. You know. Ah, oh, all right, all right. So, yeah, okay. So you got a bracket going. I, I do the brackets because you know all my friends are like, hey, come on, it should be speak for fun, bragging rights. And within a day, they're busted. So I don't even know yeah, why I yeah. let them talk me into it. Talk about peer pressure. Like, at what point do you just go, no, I'm good. You know, I I, I root for the underdog or my teams and then move on because I do love basketball, but it is. I think the they said it's the second least productive day uh, next to Black Friday shopping that uh, people like they do online shopping and stuff rather than actually working. So I've stayed focused. I haven't even looked yet, so I don't even know what my brackets look like right now. <laughs> well, this is one of the the good things about not watching television. I don't have to I don't have to worry about all that any of that stuff. Yeah, you know, and and you know, and I was uh, um, watching a little bit of television with the uh, with father in the rectory. You know, I, we'd have dinner and then just kind of like an after dinner thing. We just kind of sit around and talk or watch a, and he, he likes sports. So he was watching the NCAA, which is great. Um, but for me, I was just kind of bored. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's just, uh, again, I'm not making any judgments about the NCAA or anything like that. It's just like, when you don't watch TV, you know, there's, I, you know, I can find better things to do in my time. But I, I did get a um, kick out of it on Sunday. My son and I went to lunch, uh, before my daughter's performance and we were we went to a restaurant where they were streaming the SEC championship game and so there were a bunch of fans Auburn fans in one cluster of the corner and then a bunch of Florida fans in the other side and there was one soccer fan in the middle and ever so often you'd hear him go woo yeah (laughs) he was watching Liverpool and Manchester so eventually the Auburn fans chimed in because once they realized they had the win they're like, hey, we'll just we'll watch a little soccer with this guy, so he's not by himself. It was it was very endearing. Yeah, that's awesome. I Even like if you that. don't know what's going on, you just wait for the ball to go in the net. That's all you got to worry about. Yeah, see, there you go. And I still can't figure out what offsides is on soccer. I mean, watching my daughter play and stuff, I was like, wait, wait a minute, because I mean, it, it seems you get penalized for being fast, right? Like if you're fast, you get ahead of defend, yourself. Yeah, you get ahead. You take mm-hmm. a, well, wait, why are you get penalized for that? Yeah, you know the other person's slow. That's too bad. <laughs> Speed is it's a sport, right? It's supposed right. Like to be like your car racing. Then. You don't say, "Oh, let me slow down because the other guy's too far behind me." Right. You know, you just don't do that. It's valid. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it, it's, so we have uh, uh, on YouTube. We have Xenia said, "I'm watching you and March Madness there you go. simultaneously." <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's awesome. A little See, beacon, you can a little multitask. bracketology. 
multitask. Look at that. She's getting her faith in, and she's getting her March Madness in at the same time. Because you can could, you could actually watch that without the volume, right? Because you can listen oh, sure. to Beacon of Truth. Because then you don't have to listen to the squeak, 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 squeak. Which, have you heard that, I don't know if it's Nike or Adidas that are trying to come up with the squeak-free tennis shoe, and they've also created a basketball that does not make a sound. Oh, really? I cannot. Well, I mean, what would the game be like when it's just well, it becomes golf at that point? Yeah, <laughs> you don't well, hear first anything. First of all, you have to say sneaker, not tennis shoe. Oh my I bad. Mean, ba- basketball players don't play in tennis shoes. Right. Tennis players play in tennis shoes. Good, Come on. good point. Good point. Yeah. To which, <laughs> why, as a musician, I just put on my loafers and go on stage. I'm <laughs> good to go. <laughs> we'll be back with Beacon of Truth. The most original and exclusive Catholic content is on EWTN Radio. I don't like looking back. I prefer to look forward and keep moving forward. There's plenty to cover. I do a lot of research and try to dig out the bits and pieces of a life or an agenda that people don't want to talk about. The World Over with Raymond Arroyo. Tonight, 8 Eastern on EWTN Radio and Television. This is Father Joseph Mary of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word. Let's pray with Mother Angelica. Let's say a prayer. Lord God, I ask that you give us all the gifts of thy spirit, all the gifts we need and we know and those we don't know, Lord. We ask, Lord, for the gift of courage and strength and repentance when we sin and determination and zeal to be holy. We ask that we may seek the one thing necessary that we may love as you love, that we may be a caring, humble people, that we will have that intuitive vision to know they love thee and serve thee, and that we will look upon our neighbor as we look upon Jesus. Those are the higher gifts. Grant them to all of us, Lord, now and in eternity. Amen. Is that a Moog uh, piano? Yeah, or, or, kind of yeah. like a Hammond B almost. Have, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. All right, because like, oh, I've, I've heard that sound before. It's been a while, though. Yeah, that's they, awesome. Now they have pedals to emulate it, so all the MIDI makers are you know, creating it without the need to actually play the Hammond B. And they're actually ah, really expensive, see. so I, I get that part of it. See, that's why I say the 70s and... Early 80s are the best era for music. We have real musicians playing real instruments and not all this technical stuff and just just being one with the instrument, you know, yeah. and, and creating. I agree. That's a beautiful thing. Yep. Well, you're listening to Beacon of Truth. I'm your host, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers on the EW10 Global Catholic Radio Network. And today's topic is Eucharistic Adoration. Like I said, I know some of you have had a powerful experience with our Lord being before him in the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call, 833-288-3986. We want to let you know that if you're looking for some great uh, gift ideas, especially as we get closer to Easter, a hand-painted porcelain egg cups uh, by the Monastery of Bethlehem. These are hand-painted and exclusive within EWTN. Unique designs available and painted in the U.S. uh, by uh, the Sisters of Bethlehem. If you want to find out more about it, easy to do when you go to EWTNRC.com. Remember, free standard shipping, online orders of $75 or more. All you have to do is, of course, use the code word FREE at checkout. Yes, well, that is the psalm music. That means it is time to explore and break open the word of God as expressed in the book of sung praises, the Sefer Telachim, uh, or otherwise known as the Psalms, the song book of the Israelites. And today, because we're talking about Eucharistic adoration, I'm gonna, we're going to take a look at Psalm 63. This psalm is one that I always, always start my adoration time with. 
Uh, no, as soon as I get in, because you know, come, look, sometimes your mind your, is wandering. You got so many things in, in your head. And people, I can't get focused. Like, how do I kind of focus in on what I need to do there before the Lord in adoration? And uh, so this psalm kind of centers me and focuses me. So Psalm 63, that means it's in book two of the Psalms, uh, Psalms 42 to 72. And Psalm 63 is written by David. David wrote Psalms 50 to, uh, to sorry, 51 to 72 uh, in book two. And, the, uh, and uh, what's also interesting about this particular psalm is that the last three verses are not included in the breviary or the liturgy of the hours. So if you have either the one volume or the four volume set, it only goes up to verse nine. Verse 10, 11, 12 are missing because they're imprecatory. Um, they're kind of like cur- quote unquote cursing part of the psalm. And there's uh, this is one of the psalms where not the entire psalm is omitted, like 58, 83, and 109, but part of the psalm is omitted. But we're going to dive into that today. We'll just read the whole thing <laughs> and, and make up your mind uh, uh, whether you think it uh, should have been left in. I, again, I agree with St. Augustine who said that uh, we should keep uh, pray the entire psalm without omitting anything. So the prescript is uh, verse 1, a psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah. So this, again, is uh, in 1 Samuel where uh, David is escaping persecution from Saul, who's trying to hunt him down and kill him. So David's trying to stay one step ahead of Saul. And here's how this, the, again, the, the first four verses of the psalm really, really, I, I just love praying this. And this psalm is also prayed during uh, Sunday morning, uh, morning prayer or laws of week one. And when there's feasts or solemnities, this is one of the psalms that's always prayed uh, when there's a feast or a solemnity. Uh, so this, this psalm is important. So it starts. O oh God, you are my God. At dawn, I seek you. Right? So the, the, the early rising in the morning. This is something that uh, has been carried forward today in the monastic tradition. You know, the uh, monks usually arise early. And, and nuns, of course, close to nuns and monks, arise early to pray. The liturgy of the hours. Um, uh, and, and lauds as, you know, uh, when the sun is rising, you know, the son of God rose from the dead as the sun is rising. They're breaking open their voices in praise. So at dawn, I seek you. I love this. For you, my soul is thirsting. For you, my flesh is pining. Yes, that to me gets to the heart of the power of fasting. You know, because when you're fasting from food, you're fasting from something you enjoy, that hunger, that longing, that desire that you feel, is really a, a physical sign of what we really are thirsting and hungering and desiring, a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, right? So fasting is a, a physical reminder that what we're ultimately preparing ourselves for is complete union with God. And I, I love to, you, my soul is thirsty, my flesh is pining, like a dry, weary land without water, right? That water You see pictures of the arid ground with all the cracks in it, which is just opening itself to receive the life-giving rain uh, that it's longing for. And we receive, you know, we long to receive the life-giving power of God's spirit in our lives as well. And we do receive that in the sacraments. And every Sunday we receive a body, blood, soul, divinity in the Eucharist. Uh, And now here's, I love this uh, verse three. I have come before you in the sanctuary to behold your strength and your glory. So as you right, so that's that's why I start with this psalm. It helps me focus, it helps me center, and then that line three comes in. There, there I there we are in adoration, kneeling before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. I have come before you in the sanctuary to behold your strength and your glory. I've come to be with you, Lord. I've come to spend time with you. I've come to behold your manifesting your greatness and your beauty to us. In his most blessed sacrament, the Eucharist. And then verse 4 gets me every time. Your loving mercy is better than life. <laughs> what? what? Your lo- uh, the, 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 the current version in the, the brief says, your love is better than life. But here it's rendered, 
hes, the Hebrew hesed, uh, which is actually the, the, the parallel to agape in the Greek, your loving mercy or merciful love is better than life. Holy cow, man. I mean, I could, I could spend the rest of adoration just focusing on that one line. I think about the martyrs, right, who, who's, who's, uh, whose love for the Lord was even better than their own life. They gave their life uh, because they, out of love for the Lord. Well, and I love, too, because, you know, we you know, pray the Lord's Prayer you know, numerous times a day. The, the line of, you know, give us this day our daily bread. To me, I always saw that line as also asking for God to make us hungry for him. Not just not just meaning it in a literal eating sense, but also in that starvation spiritually so that we are only after what he's after. Yeah, and here's something interesting, too. If you look in the Greek, in the two versions of the Our Father, in uh, uh, Matthew and Luke's Gospel, um, the word there in Greek is actually... Now, if you said daily, you would expect to see hamera, which is the Greek word for daily, but instead you see epiousios. Mm -hmm. Uh, which actually means like super substantial, or supernatural. Uh, so the word daily there is actually not there in the Greek. And again, interesting. We'll we, we talk about that another time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's dive back into the psalm. My lips will speak your praise. Why? It's a conversation. We're having a conversation with the Lord. Heart to heart, right? Heart to heart. Talk with our Lord. The intimate encounter with him. My life and his life there in, in, before in the Blessed Sacrament. Exchanging our hearts. I love that. I will bless you all my life. Hold on. I will bless you all my life. How do we bless the Lord? How do we bless? We bless the Lord by being the person who God created us to be. That's how we bless the Lord. By, by being the person who God created us to be. To use our talents and our gifts to honor and glorify the Lord. That's how we bless the Lord. Now, we, of course, we receive blessings from the Lord, but we can also bless him. We honor him by the witness of our life. In, uh, I will bless you all my life. In your name, I will lift up my hands, my hands in prayer to you, O Lord. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. Uh, my, uh, and with joyful lips, my mouth shall praise you. I right? praise the Lord with joy in my heart. Love that. When I remember you upon my bed, I muse on you through the watches of the night. So it talks about the watch of the night. Something you see in the Bible, the third watch, the fifth, the, f the sixth watch. These were particular hours uh, in, that mark time during the night. And again, we see the monks, especially the Cistercians uh, tra or Trappists or even the Carthusians that follow the rule of St. Bruno. Uh, if you see that beautiful movie, Integrate Silence, beautiful. Um, they literally get up in the middle of the night. That's when their day starts. For you have been my strength. In the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. Right? So even in God's shadow, we rejoice because we're under his loving protection. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand holds me up. I love that. My soul clings fast to you. My my soul is united. Like when we receive our Lord Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity, the Eucharist, we become one with him. And we sustain that relationship before him in, in the blessed sacrament of the Eucharist. Now, here are the imprecatory verses. Those who seek to destroy my life shall go down to the depths of the earth. Now, remember, David's being pursued uh, and, and trying to be killed by Saul. So he, he he's rejoicing in the Lord. He's honoring the Lord. He's... he's um, uh, uh, praying here about how his deep, intimate connection to the Lord. But now he turns his attention back to the, the situation at hand, his, his being pursued. And he says, those who seek to destroy my life shall go down to the depths of the earth. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of um, uh, when um, Korah rebelled against Moses and Aaron in um, Numbers chapter uh, 16. This is the ground open. And Korah and his family went down alive to Sheol. So, um, you know, so David is saying, Lord, protect me here. Put to the power of the sword, they shall be left as the prey for the jackals, right? To the power of the sword. So when they've defeated, they become prey for the, for the, wild, for the wild beasts. But the king shall rejoice in God. All that swear by him shall exalt for the mouth of liars shall be silenced. 
Now, that doesn't sound too bad to me as far as a cursing psalm. I think they should have left that in. Uh, but the king shall rejoice in God. Um, so, so David, right, he's the king now, right? And he's the one that's going to rejoice in God. Uh, all that swear by him, by the Lord shall exalt, for the mouth of liars shall be silenced. So we should take um, heed and note of the fact that those who speak evil against us, those who speak uh, against the beauty and truth of the reality of a culture of life, for example, um, that, that they, they will be silenced. You know, it's, maybe not now, maybe not in this lifetime, but definitely when the Lord comes back to reclaim his kingdom for the Father. We're talking about Eucharistic adoration today. Would love to be part of the conversation. Give us a call, 833-288-3986. Wings is a weekly newsletter that's packed with program information, features, and updates of all that's going on at EWTN. To sign up, go to EWTN.com, click subscribe, enter your name and email address, and you'll start getting your Wings every week. Get your Wings today. It's the weekly newsletter from EWTN, the Global Catholic Network. If you missed any of today's show or want to share it with someone, you can find Beacon of Truth on demand at EWTN.com slash radio. And now, the EWTN Family Prayer with Father Joseph. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me, our EWTN Family Prayer. Today we pray for the elderly, Almighty God and Father, we adore you from whom all life has come and to whom all life returns. Give to those who are suffering under the burden of the years hope and joy. Fill them with gratitude for their many years and make them rich in love. As they grow older on the outside, make them younger on the inside through the work of the Holy Spirit. Use this time to prepare them, Lord, for the joys of eternal life. Amen. 24-7 Catholic Radio 365. This is EWTN. What are you looking forward to? That's tomorrow on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on most of these EWTN stations. Now back to Beacon of Truth with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. happening here raise your hands yeah <laughs> the roof the roof the roof is up <laughs> it's, a, it's our Woo! official raise the roof yeah Linton yeah. season edition yeah bring me back to the college days now man <laughs> I'm telling you uh, that's awesome man you're listening to beacon of truth i'm your host deacon harold burke Sivers, and if you just heard we have the best bumper music in the business because we have an amazing team here working to bring you the show every day. Matt Gabinski screening calls, Charles Berry doing the social media, and the man bringing the music, Ace McKay. Looking forward to a great weekend as we head into Holy Week and Divine Intimacy Radio giving us the answers behind the mental prayer. What is it exactly? How can it benefit you? Dan and Jordan Burke are going to do their job to help break that down for you Sunday morning, 6.30 Eastern and 11 p.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. Well, today we're talking about Eucharistic adoration. And I know, like the last night in the mission in Holotus, Texas, uh, I talked about Eucharistic adoration as part of the armor of God that, that uh, uh, Paul was talking about. And I said, how many of you have had experience with, with our Lord in Eucharistic adoration? You know how many hands went up? Like almost everybody there. So I know that members of our EWTN family has had powerful experiences with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And why are we telling us a beacon of truth? Because it is the truth that Jesus Christ is present in Eucharist. Not a sign, not a symbol. The reality of body, blood, soul, divinity and, and that's why we go before Lord. not worship a piece of bread, we're worshiping the living God. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call, 
Again, that's 833-288-3986. Talking about adoration. On YouTube, we had Clara said, my favorite is Eucharistic adoration. I thank God my parish has our Lord exposed daily for us. Praise Jesus. You know, every parish should have Eucharistic adoration. Now, I'm not saying you should always have 24-hour Eucharistic adoration. You could do that even better. But every parish should have Eucharistic adoration at least sometime during the week. And if you have a deacon there, a deacon uh, can, uh, can expose the Blessed Sacrament. And so if there's if a time that the deacon can do it, just, you know, say we're going to expose the Blessed Sacrament on like Tuesday and Thursday from this time to this time. Just, just make a practice to do it. It's so powerful, enriching, and rewarding. And then Mackie on YouTube also says, going back to adoration, has had so many amazing effects on my entire life. I go on Thursdays, and on one occasion while I was praying the Luminous Mysteries of the Rosary, um, adoration has had so many amazing effects. Yeah, so he had an experience while praying. The, he felt the warmth from the sun while meditating on the transfiguration. You know, so sometimes God will give you that. He'll give you a little you know, acknowledgement that uh, he's, he's uh, pleased that you, that you took the time to be with him in his presence. That's absolutely awesome. And he also wanted to say thank you to me, uh, Deacon Harold, for suggesting to pray Psalm 63 at the beginning of adoration. I've started praying it every time I go. Well, praise Jesus. Thank you so much. And John on YouTube, thanks for sharing this. You are most welcome, Job, because we're, we're here on Beacon of Truth to share the tr beauty and truth of our Catholic faith. And we have uh, Jody calling in. Jody's calling from Connecticut on the EWTN app. And we got we, we should plug that. The EWTN app is amazing. Uh, uh, so, Jody, thank you for calling the Beacon of Truth. You have an experience of adoration to share with us. Yeah, um, a couple things I've shown the screener. That First of all, thank you for taking my call. And your show is just so amazing. Every day I'm listening to this in the car. But... Um, the next thing I wanted to say is that um, I, I'm in the group called the Seven Sisters Apostolate, where there's seven um, women from my church that every day for one hour, one of us prays for the priest. We each have a special day. So I started doing this for, in, you know, because you're doing this in adoration. And I just can't believe not only how efficacious it's been for the priest, but I said what it's done for me and... Um, as a person and deep in my prayer life and just, I, I can't really describe it. I was on the screen of this too, that I'm just in such awe that our father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the, I mean, just go there is there for us. <laughs> and it's just, it, is there a human word for it? I don't think so because it's just, I can't believe it. And sometimes I don't even know how to pray. I'll start to just cry because I don't know what to say other than thank you and praise God that you would allow me to be here with you and spend this time with me and then tell me you love me. I mean, where are you going to get that? You don't get it anywhere. This is where you get it in adoration. Wow, Jody, what a beautiful call. That is absolutely Awesome. You are, you, God, you brought so many beautiful things. You are exactly right. Because sometimes you, there are no words. You, ju you just start crying. You just start, you know, just opening your heart and let, just pouring it out. That Remember, Hosea 6, verse 6, I want a loving heart more than sacrifice, knowledge of my ways more than holocaust. And, and so sometimes your prayer is, your, is crying. You know, your prayer is your emotion, sharing your heart with Christ. Oh, Jody, what a beautiful call. Now, and I pray, and then she's right. If you want more vocations to the priesthood, adoration. You want to improve things in uh, your marriage, adoration. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not magic. It's like you're, you, you're, what you're saying is, Lord, I love you, and I want to give myself totally to you. I want to give my life totally to you. I want to spend this time with you, opening and sharing my heart. So, man, Jody, what a beautiful call. Thank you so much. And we had CJ on YouTube. Uh, yes, you have to have a person there always. Yes, whenever our Lord is exposed, the Blessed Sacrament, there has to be someone there while the Lord is exposed. And, uh, and, and that's why they shorten the hours at the parish. And, and we've seen that. Coming back from the pandemic, it's been difficult for parishes that used to do 
um, Eucharistic adoration on a regular basis, trying to find those people now. Um, some people haven't come back or people's lives have changed since uh, since 2000, uh, you know, 2021. And so they can't have the same amount of hours that they had. But they know we're, it's, a, it's part of rebuilding, right? We're part of rebuilding. So um, the most important thing is you do what you can. You know, you do what you can and you build from there. Just, just giving the opportunity for people to be before the Lord is life-changing. Just like it was life-changing for Lori, calling from Jackson, Michigan, uh, 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 Good Shepherd. And uh, Lori... Can you, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thanks for calling Beacon of Truth. <laughs> awesome. Um, the reason I was calling was uh, I'm not sure I I caught the tail end of the other lady's talk there, but I was calling to give a plug for the Seven Sisters Apostolate. Did she just uh, talk about oh, that? Oh, yes. Yes, she talked about how uh, uh, her and the other women take turns praying for the priesthood. Yes, that's exactly right. So she actually beat me to it because that was what I was going to talk about. It's such a wonderful lay ministry. One one hour a week, you can uh, volunteer to pray for your priest, and so it it gives a uh, it's a one year commitment, and your priest has somebody praying for him um, one um, one hour every day for the whole year. So it's it's pretty amazing, and it's spreading. So we need a lot of prayers for our priests right now. Yeah, I love that, Lori. I really do, uh, because um, what, what you're what you're expressing here is sometimes people get frustrated with the priests. Sometimes they get angry because they hear some of the abuse things going on. And what we don't focus on are the the, you know, the ninety eight <laughs> plus percent of the priests who are spiritual fathers, and just like any member of a family, they need to be prayed for. We keep forgetting just because they're, you know, they're, they're not married and everything, and, and you know, but but they still they still need our prayers. It's tough out there right now, um, uh, being a priest. There's just so much going on in the culture, in the world, and uh, in the parishes, and they definitely need our prayers. And uh, also the, the the men in seminary in formation, you know, need our prayers as well. So what a wonderful apostle, the seven sisters apostolate praying for priests. Wow, how beautiful. Uh, Wendy on YouTube, does virtual adoration count if you can get if you can't get there for health reasons? Okay, so ver- that's actually a very good question, Wendy, because that's exactly what I did during the pandemic. <laughs> you know, I, I went to a, a website called Savior.org, or you can go to EWTN. During that time, EWTN had twenty four hour uh, uh, at, uh, 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 virtual adoration, and I just pop, you know, I I, I open like two browsers. I'd sh- I'd shrink one browser and put the Lord up in the corner of the screen, and that'd be my adoration. Or I just do full screen, and that would be my adoration because we couldn't go, you know. And remember, going to adoration, um, you know, th- think about it like this, Wendy. Uh, is it's always better to be there in person? Because think about it, like tonight, I'm gonna call my wife. And usually when I call my wife, I do FaceTime or I do, you know, Skype or something because I like to see her when I talk to her. But I'd rather be with her because isn't it always better to be in the presence of the person that you love when you're talking to them? That's what adoration is. Right? And uh, and, and uh, our, our social media guru, Charles Beery, says EWTN still has the adoration webcam available so wendy yes if you can't get there in person absolutely uh go ahead and do uh virtual adoration beautiful we'd love to hear about your adoration experience we're talking about eucharistic adoration today on beacon of truth on the ewtn global catholic radio network i'm your host deacon harold burke service the number to call for you to join us is 833-288-3986 again that's 833-288-3986 Three nine eight six, and obviously I want to talk about this topic too, because again we're in the midst of the Eucharistic revival that's happening at least here in the United States of America, and I hope the other countries that are listening to the show right now, um, uh, England and uh, uh, I, the you know UK, Ireland, uh, Philippines, and other countries are also doing something to restore uh, uh, our our faith and our belief in Christ 
real presence in the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the, the, the central realities of our faith. You know, it's not just what we do, but who we are when we unite ourselves with Christ beautifully. Sue's calling from Columbus, Ohio, listening on Alexa. It's always interesting to me how people <laughs> are listening to, uh, to, to, to the show uh, through Alexa. So uh, uh, thank you so much for calling us, Sue. Uh, what experience would you like to share with us on Beacon of Truth? Um, well, first of all, I'd just like to say um, I'm so thankful, Deacon, that you're a part of the church. Um, you are a blessing to the church. But I also wanted to say that I'm relatively new convert, just a few years now. And um, even before I came into the church, I would spend time before the tabernacle, you know, just being with the Lord and and praying, okay, Lord, what are you doing with me? Where, what are you doing? Where am I? Why are you leading me here? And um, but yeah, just going. I've found a real small chapel, and the Lord just makes His presence so real to me in adoration. And sometimes I read, sometimes I just sit in His presence, and sometimes I weep. You know, I just pour out my heart to Him. Um, but it's. Uh, he will. He he meets me there, and I'm just so thankful. I've made a list of different churches and the different times they have adoration available. So wherever I am in town, I can zip in somewhere and spend some time. And so uh, I don't know. I don't know what else I can say. But yeah, the Lord definitely has met me there. Uh, you said it all. I mean, I, I think I think st- uh, testimonies like yours, Sue are going to encourage people that maybe have been sitting on the fence about adoration and not sure about adoration and, well, what do I do? Do I just kind of sit there? Well, no. And you, you're so right. So you just, you just open yourself and just be before the Lord. And he will meet you there. He will meet you there. Because um, uh, he promised to be with us always until the end of the age. And he is with us in that most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist. So I love calls like yours, Sue. Thank you so much. This is, this is so beautiful. And we have uh, George calling in from Fairhope, Alabama, on Archangel Radio. And I've been to Fairhope uh, several times and on Archangel Radio. So, George, thank you for calling Beacon of Truth. We'd like to share with us today. Oh, just, uh, just tell me, fella there, uh, we started Adoration uh, 24-7, you know, perpetual at Daphne, at Christ the King, back in 2013, and it's been just awesome. Uh, Missy, that put it all together, it's just done a great job. We've got two people per per hour, and a lot of subs that come in if somebody can't make it, and uh, a lot of some awesome stories. In fact, Missy wrote a book, uh, I can't think of the name of it, about what has come out of our, our adoration there in, in, in Daphne over the years. Uh, I'd love to say I've had a, some profound moments. I've had, <laughs> I, I haven't had anything that's just, you know, an epiphany thing, but it's just so peaceful when I go and, and I, I, I look forward to it. I go at three o'clock in the morning and uh, it, at first it was a little burden, but now I'm looking forward to it. it it's crazy, but that starts my week. It's like, okay, I'm starting the week off on Friday morning. It just, it just starts everything for me, and I love it. I, I enjoy going, and uh, I just, uh, you know, it's just, it's just been great. There's just been so many good things come out of it. Oh, George, what a great call. You know, and and uh, you remind me every time I go to a parish, the first thing I ask is, do you have an adoration chapel? First thing, you know, and if they don't then I ask permission if I can expose the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, you know, because I want to make sure I hit my holy hour, you know, wherever I, wherever I go. You know, uh, and so it's, it's beautiful. You have the 24-hour chapel there, 24-7 Eucharistic Adoration. Um, and, and, and people can't find me. Where's Dick Harold? We can't find him. Check Adoration. Most likely, that's exactly where I'll be before our Lord. If you want to share your experience with our Lord Jesus Christ, the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, that's what we're talking about today on Beacon of Truth. Give us a call, 833-288-3986. Just like Kathy has done from Durham, North Carolina, listening on the EWTN app. 
Kathy, would you like to share with us today on Beacon of Truth? Oh, my gosh. So uh, we had a, um, a priest that was assigned to us as an administrator temporarily. And what a blessed man. He is. Um, he wants to bring Jesus to everybody. He started bringing Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament to people's homes for a little bit of prayer. But also, he wanted to start adoration. So Fridays during Lent, so this Friday is the last Friday, we have adoration in Durham, North Carolina at St. Matthew's Parish from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And so what I've done is committed to coordinate that, but I've also been there every day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. with a couple of times I stuck out to let my dog out and then come back. So, um, and I got to tell you, spending time in front of the Blessed Sacrament is so great. And people say, how can you just, how can you stay there? I'm like, oh my gosh, how can you not? <laughs> I, I, I share that with you. It's wonderful. That's I mean, awesome. Oh my gosh. Kathy, you're awesome. God, I love our EWTN family, man. This is great. See, it's this, look, if you've been sitting on the fence about adoration, listen to what Kathy just said. This is exactly what the, the Lord wants. Do you, you hear the joy in Kathy's voice? You hear that joy? That's joy that comes from the Lord. That's the joy that you get in life when you sit before our Lord and the blessed sacrament just be before him. Beautiful. Uh, again, we're talking about Eucharistic adoration today on Beacon of Truth. The number is 833-288-3986. Just like Chris has done calling from Wichita, Kansas, listening at EWTN.com. So, Chris, would you like to share with us on Beacon of Truth? Yeah, I, you know, I think it's interesting. When I leave, I get this feeling of loss. Kind of like, um, I wish I could remain there all day. Like um, when you're leaving your family's house and you wave and you feel that in your heart. I, I just don't know how to explain it other than that. But um, every time I leave the Adoration Chapel, that feeling of, I wish I could be here more. So, Well, you know what that is, Chris? That's when you leave somebody you love. I, I feel that way whenever I leave home. The goal is speaking. Like I've, I've been on a speaking tour now for, for gosh, I think I've been home. Four days since February 5th, you know, and I and when I leave to go, uh, you know, speaking, I get that same feeling, leaving my wife and kids, you know, just like, ah, you know, and, and but it's so beautiful that you get that same feeling when leaving our Lord, you know, uh, but the beautiful thing is you come back. He's always there. He's always there for you, Chris. Uh, what a what a wonderful call. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, we're also talking with Nina, calling from my home state of New Jersey, uh, listening on Sirius XM 130. Nina, what do you love to share with us today on Beacon of Truth? Oh, hi. Thank you for taking my call. I just am um, making a phone call of Thanksgiving for my parish for having Eucharistic adoration 24-7. About 10 years ago, uh, my son started uh, suffering with depression due to um, first a fractured wrist and then a broken wrist a year later, and he was falling behind academically, and we got him the help he needed, but it, it was just a slow process. It took nearly 10 years for him to get out of the depression, and during that time, it was very hard to reach him, and I really felt like I was on the sidelines. And I, I, my husband was already in Eucharistic adoration very early in the morning, and so I signed up myself, and I was already a daily communicant. And over the seven solid years, I did do even more than that, but over the seven solid years that I attended five, five days a week of adoration, it started with conversation with the Lord, a little bit of anger, a little a lot of crying. Then I studied, but then I started to listen. And I remember one day leaving, and I felt as though my feet weren't touching the floor. I even called my friend as I left the chapel, walked through the church, saying, my feet aren't touching the floor. I know my son's going to be okay. I just, this is great, you know, and it still took another three years before we really saw a change. But I just felt when I started listening more and enjoying the presence of the Lord, knowing he was there and listening and loving me, that there's this peace that surpasses all understanding. I just wanted everyone to have it, but I also saw other people that were there who were coming and going over the seven years, receiving the same type of graces that I have, and I've seen them, and I'm just so delighted that our 
church continues to have this 24-7 adoration. And people come from all over, and they sign up um, for their hour from all over the other parishes. So I just want to give thanksgiving for that, for our, our parish to, to have that um, availability for us. Well, amen. Because, you know, the word uh, thanksgiving is Eucharistane in Greek. So literally, <laughs> Eucharist means thanksgiving. Uh, so thank you, Nina, for sharing that. Well, what a beautiful experience. We're talking about Eucharistic Adoration today on Beacon of Truth on the EW10 Global Catholic Radio Network. And we're also going to be talking with Kathy, calling from Columbus, Ohio, uh, St. Gabriel Radio. And it said, you said you're, you're pulling up the adoration right now? Yes, I am. I just pulled up to, to St. Paul. So, yeah. <laughs> It was perfect timing because I was listening to the radio coming here. I'm going, hey, I can participate in that. Oh, how awesome is that? Do you go? You have anything that you're praying for while you're in adoration today? Um, oh, well, actually, I had um, a couple uh, people that um, my boss at work was telling me about today So because she knew I was coming. So, yes, I do have people that I specifically I'm going to pray for. Um, but I, what I wanted to share was that I initially had a— um, I didn't. I didn't like the idea of going to adoration, and if it wasn't imposed on me, <laughs> I wouldn't have done it. Because, you know, I was a cradle Catholic, and as like most teenagers and young adults, I was away from the church for a little bit. But then in 2005, I decided, you know, to come back. And so, first thing you do, of course, go to confession. And the 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 priest in the confessional at the, my actual church. Um, he gave me a penance of going to adoration once a week for a year. I was like, Whoa. What? A year? Are you <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say this to him, but I came home and I was venting to my husband, right? And he was agreeing, like, what? That's crazy. You just wanted to fill up people because there aren't enough slots, you know, people fill in the slots, whatever. I'm like, okay, fine. So I go to the first day, you know, arms folded and just sitting there kind of angry. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, uh, uh. I'll come back next week, you know. So I come back on the second day, or the second Saturday. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know, I guess I could do this for a, a year. I could do this. And then by the third Saturday, I was like, I will do this, like, every, every forever. You know what I mean? Like, this is the <laughs> best thing. Because you don't, unless you try it, you don't realize, like, Wow. You know, the, the peace that comes into your heart and just, you know, his presence is there. Yes. You know, and I went, I visited my, one of my friends, um, her dad died and there, you know, was it a non-denominational type church? And I didn't even realize it was a church as I was walking through. I thought it was just like a conference room, like a theater conference room kind of thing. And then I realized it's because Jesus isn't here. No wonder. Yeah. Oh, Wow. What a wonderful call to end on, man. What a great topic. We will be returning to Eucharistic Adoration, talking about this again, because there were so many people we couldn't even get to today. But this is just an incredible topic. So uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Remember, you can stream today's show by visiting Podcast Central at EW10.com slash radio. And tomorrow, we're going to be talking about Catholic education, but not in the school. So may Almighty God bless you and protect you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. ...of the abortion pills case at the Supreme Court next week.